All right, hello everyone. Um, some of you may know me as Brave Sir Robin over at the org, um, as well as an EB online. And I'm doing a commentary battle on. It was actually a, a battle fought earlier this year in July for our online tournament. Uh, it's pitting me playing as the Adui uh, against my opponent Lazio, who's playing as the Carthaginians. And I'm just going to go through each one of our armies really quickly. Um, I brought four units of Yosatai, or Celtic Slingers, stretched out in front. Um, my front line composes of four units of Nietos, Gaelic Heavy Swordsmen. Uh, my second line is four units of Tacastos, or Rayetic Axemen. Next, the third line is composed of four units of Milnot, Belgay Swordsmen. These are sort of medium swordsmen. Um, and the back line, or just the reserve unit, is a unit of Gaisatai, uh, Gallic Naked Fanatic in Infantry. I put them in loose formation to sort of protect against arrows, obviously, because they are naked. But they do have two hit points, and, they're very, and they have a fear effect, so they're very powerful. Uh, and then I brought two units of Brehenton, which are Gallic Noble Cavalry. Um, some of the best cavalry the Gauls can bring. And so this battle starts off with a missile duel. Uh, I sent out my slingers to engage his archers. Just really, I want to waste up his arrows so that they can't shoot at my uh, Gaelic infantry, which is, I would say, lessly armored than most other factions. Alright, and what Lazio has brought over here, uh, his front line is composed of five units of Hopitai, Greek classical hoplites, or spear units, and then his general unit, uh, which is the, I don't know how to pronounce that, Hanatim Libim Kibedim, or a Libyan heavy spearman. Uh, then he has four units of Numidian archers, which he's placed behind his line. Uh, two units of Dorke Hatquapa Iberim, Iberian assault infantry, and he has two of these on each wing. Um, one unit of Gaisatai, same unit on, that I have on each wing. Uh, one unit of another unit of Libyan heavy spearmen on each wing. And then he strengthened this wing with the unit of Lorikati Scutarii, Iberian Heavy Infantry. And he only brought one cavalry unit. It's a unit of Iberi Lanciarii, Iberian Heavy Cavalry. Um, they're a little bit better than my Gaelic Noble Cavalry, but I have two units of those. So I have the cavalry advantage here. Alright, so this battle is really just starts off with a missile duel. Um, my goal, slingers are cheap. Basically just to, hoping to soak up the arrows cause some casualties to his archers. Uh, if he uses all his arrows up, that's a big advantage for me. And then I can use the remaining slingers to sort of pelt at his cavalry. That's why he set his cavalry so far back. Uh, he doesn't want to lose them. The same reason I've set mine far back. Oh, and I think I actually forgot to mention um, my druid unit. Uh, druids, they're no longer on the Gaelic roster. Uh, they were in July, and I think it was determined that the Gauls were not necessarily overpowered, but they were relatively stronger than some of the other factions with the druids. Um, so we restricted them to the British fac, the Cassie. Um They're the only ones that can recruit druids now. Although the Adui can still get their Carnutes with the Druidic Chant. And really what the Chant does is it lowers morale of your enemies while increasing your own morale. It's very powerful. Alright, so I'm just going to fast forward a little through this. It's sort of a boring missile duel. My poor slinger is getting torn to shreds. His new mini archers are... Oh, here we go. His new mini archers are winning the missile duel. But I don't really care. He used more money on them than I used on mine. And obviously this is an infantry heavy battle anyway. So now what I'm doing uh, is I'm just advancing. I'm not advancing straight on. Um, he has very strong wings. And even though I have the three lines, I don't really want to fight a defensive battle with the Gauls. The Gauls are not good in prolonged slugfests. Um, really what you want to do is basically break your enemy as soon as possible. And so to that end I've brought the fear-inducing Gaisatai as well as the Druids to chant. Um, so I'm advancing slowly. I don't want to tire my men out too quickly. And he's turning to meet me. Um, but in a second I'm just going to spring the trap and here I go. I start running. Uh, basically I want to get my guys in position before he can adjust his line properly. Sort of catch him off guard. And you can see what's happening over here. 
He's struggling to move the, these infantry into position. He's a little slow in getting these into place. Um, I'm going to use my Nietos basically as a big wall. They're pretty heavily armored and they do a lot of damage with those long swords. Uh, so they can stand up in a big slugfest. And if I can get them against his infantry with the spears, uh, they'll slaughter them. Alright, so again I'm running my guys into position. Still keeping my cavalry back at this point in time. I don't want them to shoot my cavalry up and I don't want to get them needlessly killed. Alright, so now the trap is sprung. These infantry still haven't moved. Um, and meanwhile, you can see I'm sort of forming a little wall over here to sort of cut this side of his army off. And I'm using my axemen to flank. These axemen obviously have an armor-piercing attack. They also have armor-piercing javelins, which makes them great against uh, the Iberian Assault Infantry. Iberian Assault Infantry are not a true elite, they're a semi-elite of Carthage. They have armor-piercing swords, so I don't want them matched up against my Nietos. I'd rather have them matched up against a medium unit like the axemen. Okay, so now you see I've sealed this side of the battle off. He's got to run his guys around. I've got my druids over here chanting. I've got my nakeds creating a fear effect. And I move the Nietos around even further. I send two units of mill not around the flank. I'm just creating a big infantry ball here. I'm trying to break these units. And you can see him rushing all of his reserve infantry as well as his Numidian archers over to help on this flank. And now he's sending his cavalry over to attack my slingers, but I have my two units of cavalry out here. And really, I don't care if I lose these slingers. That's not a big deal. Uh, so now I'm just trying to catch him. I've got two units of Milnot over here to help defend this flank. This is obviously my weaker flank. And here I attempt to charge. It's not a very good charge. Pull out quickly. Over here at this end, I've created a giant infantry ball of the Radic Axemen. Um, we're wearing through those. I'd be an assault infantry, and over here I've even routed a unit. It's probably just an archer unit, so it's not a big deal. The Milnot are very good swordsmen, good medium swordsmen. All right, over at this side, I'm just firing at his his cavalry. My slingers are actually doing decent damage, and so he's pulling them around. He's afraid of my infantry. His hoplites have to pull out here, and the pressure of all this uh, is actually too much for these Iberian assault infantry, and they're breaking. The combination of the druids and the nakeds and the being flanked and shot in the back. Uh, now I'm just really engaging his cavalry, and I've basically killed off his cavalry at this point. There's only 19 of them left. I still have the majority of my cavalry left. Um, I designate one of them to chase down these guys because I don't want them to me. And I've actually broken a unit of Iberian Assault Infantry over here. And the uh, Axemen have come back to hit his flank. And I also sent the Gaisatai over here. Gaisatai like are very good fighters as well. And you can see this charge over here. This charge routes the unit of his uh, Iberian Assault. And this is really the area where he needed to be successful in the battle. Um, Milnot will not stand up to Gaisatai and Libyan Heavy Infantry and Iberian Assault Infantry. So he was really hoping for a breakthrough over here, but he couldn't get it. And you can just see my slingers picking off his cavalry. They're getting a charge, but there's only seven of them left. My Milnot is still going to stand. And I line up this unit of Prehenton over here for basically the decisive charge of the game. The decisive charge of the game. Ah, here we go. And here they come. They're going to smack right into the back of this spear unit. And that's basically a game set and match there. This unit breaks. This flank is safe at this point. I use this cavalry unit over here to finish off these guys. Um, in about the span of three seconds I've turned a close battle into basically what's going to become a slaughter. Uh, these units are surrounded here. These Yaxmen are coming over to complete the envelopment. I have my two units of cavalry still. His cavalry are basically all dead. You, know? and you can see that guy just fell off his horse like a shit. Here comes another charge against these hoplites. We're nobly standing in line. Now they are no longer standing. Now they're just dying. Run, hoplites, run. Oh, not that way. Poor decision. Uh, here goes the center line. Getting knocked out. He's still holding over here, but he's not going to hold for much longer. The guys Satai are still fighting, but they're, you know, they're not going to last forever. 
here comes this unit of the green assault. These guys reformed. I guess he was hoping to come down on my flanks. And, but at this point, it's basically game over. And here comes the coup de gras coming in from these Brihenten. And at this point, Lazy decides he's had enough. Uh, he admits defeat. Uh, Lazy's one of my favorite opponents. He's very gracious in defeat. Um, and he's one of the better players in EB Online as well. So, good game to Lazy. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.